It is the duty of every Muslim that he invites non-Muslims toward Islam. There are various different methodologies as well as strategies used by Muslims as far as Dawah is concerned. The most common strategy is whenever a Muslim meets a non-Muslim, he speaks 100 good things about Islam. Even if that non-Muslim agrees with all the 100 good things that the person has spoken about Islam, yet that non-Muslim will have few negative points behind the mind. He may say, yes, I agree about all these 100 good things about Islam, but you are the same Muslim who is a terrorist. Ah, you are the same Muslim who is a fundamentalist. Ah, you are the same people who spread your religion with the sword. You are the people who subjugated the women. Ah, you are the Muslims who marry more than one woman. These few negative points at the back of his mind will prevent him from accepting the beauty of Islam. That's the reason. Whenever I meet any non-Muslim, I ask him up front, what do you feel is wrong with Islam? With your limited knowledge, whether right or wrong, what do you feel is wrong with Islam? And I make him comfortable that he can criticize Islam. If he wants, he can attack Islam. I make him comfortable and I ask him, what does he feel is wrong with the religion of Islam? And after he's made comfortable, he poses about three or four questions about Islam. And in the past couple of decades that I've been in the field of Dawah, I have realized that there are about 20 most common questions which the non-Muslims have regarding Islam. When the non-Muslim poses three or four questions about Islam, invariably, these three or four questions fall amongst the 20 most common questions. If all the Muslims know the reply to these 20 common questions posed by the non-Muslims with reason, logic, and science, with the quotation from Quran and Sahih Hadith, and the quotation of the scripture of the non-Muslim, even if he cannot make the non-Muslim accept Islam, at least he can neutralize the animosity that is there in the minds of the non-Muslims. At least he can neutralize the negative feeling that the person has regarding Islam. That's the reason it's very important that we Muslims are aware about these 20 common questions. How do these 20 common questions arise in the minds of the non-Muslims? Every day, the non-Muslims, they are being bombarded by the international media regarding misinformation about Islam. There is virulent propaganda regarding Islam in the international media. Whether you read the international newspapers, the international magazines, the radio broadcast stations, the television satellite channels, the internet, we find there is virulent propaganda regarding Islam. And depending how the media portrays Islam, these 20 common questions, they keep on changing. The 20 common questions that were there a couple of decades earlier, they were different than what they are today. The 20 common questions a couple of decades later may change again. Depending upon how the media portrays Islam, similarly, the 20 common questions keep on changing in the minds of the non-Muslims. And believe me, by Allah's grace, I have traveled to most of the major countries in the world. USA, Canada, UK, Saudi Arabia, UAE, Malaysia, South Africa, India. Wherever you travel, these 20 common questions are the same. There may be an additional one or two questions depending upon the local surrounding and the environment of that place. For example, if you go in the Western countries, there may be an additional question. Why does Islam prohibit the taking and giving of interest? But the remaining 20 common questions are the same. If every Muslim masters the reply to these 20 common questions, he will be able to do the fard, the compulsory act of da'wah to the non-Muslims.